Hello, and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is January the 26th, 2023. Here we are already through, almost through a whole month since the new year. And I want to say that I am so happy to see you. Um, I want to welcome back all my regulars and extend an extra warm welcome to anybody that may be new here. We got up over the 700 mark on the weekend, which makes me very happy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm just hoping that we can get 300 more before my anniversary in September. So <clears throat> today um, we are going to uh, focus on a designer. And before I start that, I just want to mention what I'm wearing. People are always wondering, but I just showed this to you. I'm thinking maybe two weeks ago, maybe three, but I think only two weeks ago. This is the Gondor shawl by Reggie at J Hook Crochet. And the reason I'm wearing it again is because Reggie just released the pattern this past week. And so I am going to put a link to it down below. Now it is a full size shawl, but I didn't do it a full size shawl. Remember I told you my frustrations with working with <coughs> four plies of yarn that were not twisted and trying to do back post double crochet. Back post double crochet aren't my best stitch to start with. I always do fumble with it, but when you've got four strands, I was getting caught so many places. So I just stopped um, before I got to another set of posts and she had one more repeat that was, I think, 10 rows. So I left off about 12 rows and then jumped down. She had a border and I did her border on the edge. And it turned out to be a perfect size to wear as a neck um, kerchief sort of thing, a neck scarf. I like to wear things in this way. You could still wear this under a coat and, and pull it up higher and, and it'd be warm. And I was quite happy with it at this, this stage, so I stopped. But if you were to make it, you need approximately 1,200, maybe a little bit more, 1,200 meters <clears throat> or yards. I'm not sure which. Uh, it is a good size full show. So I just wanted to uh, mention that again. So we're going to get started right off the bat with talking about the designer I want to feature this week. And I'm sitting way off center. I'm sure you're thinking, what are you doing way over there? But I wanted to leave space over here to put up pictures while I'm talking. I'm going to show you pictures of uh, the woman I'm talking about and um, a number of her uh, her patterns as as we go in no particular order. I just copied a lot of her patterns and uh, I'm going to show them. Then at the end, I will show the ones that I have made. So who are we talking about today? Well, I'm featuring a lady whose name is Isabel Tonsky. She goes by Bella and she designs under the name of Fiber and Fox. You'll excuse me, I hope, for always glancing down at my notes. I'll try to put them right in front of me, but there's no way I could remember everything she said without looking at my notes. Now, um, Fiber and Fox is the name that you would find her patterns under. She has a website and a blog and she also is on Facebook and Instagram. She uh, has, her patterns are available on Ravelry, Etsy, and Lovecrafts. 
So Bella is um, married with two small children and lives in Connecticut. She says that she learned to both knit and crochet when she was quite young, maybe around the age of seven. Um, but she never did do much with them. She was taught, I guess, and then didn't do anything. She said then in high school, she kind of picked up knitting again, and she tried to do a little more of that, but she just says that she didn't, she didn't feel she could manipulate and, and shape the yarn very well. And so she then turned to crochet. And that would be towards the end of high school. She says she actually, at that point, crocheted a complete um, bed covering, a blanket. Um, I forget. I think she said a, a queen size blanket. And then she tried her hand at um, character hats and amigurumi. And the very first thing that she did freehand, as she says, in other words, with no pattern, was a fox hat. And she hasn't stopped playing with yarn since then, which has been for about 15 years. Um, so the, if the first thing she made was a fox hat, I'm going to think that had a little something to do with her name. Um, I asked then how she got into designing. And she said that, well, she had been making hats and amigurumi for a little while, mostly free form. Um, and she was making them for friends and family. And then about the time she got married, she started going to markets. And she was making a lot of one-of-a-kind items. And then she thought, well, I need to replicate these items. Um, I can't be making always originals. And of course, if you're going to a market, you do, you know, she was making many hats and many scarves and, and she had designed some hats and scarves. And so she started writing down what she was doing to duplicate this. And somehow she said that just morphed into actually designing. And in 2018, she released her very first hat pattern. Now she says over time her business shifted because she got very tired of, you know, making 80 hats and five dozen scarves or whatever is required for the market. And um, she also said that uh, it was a little hard to keep up with markets because she then had uh, a small daughter and lugging tote bins and everything to markets became difficult and awkward. So her business shifted and um, she went into be becoming a YouTube creator. I didn't mention up above she has a YouTube channel as well called Fiber and Fox. Everything she has is called Fiber and Fox. And by the way, I will link uh, several, not everything she has, at quite a long list, but I will at least link um, something on her YouTube channel. I will link her patterns in Ravelry um, and possibly I'll link either her website or her blog. If you go to her blog, you can sign up for email and then you can keep up with what's going on in her world. So she said uh, she got a little tired of the repetitious, um, you know, idea of making things over and over and over. And that's why she shifted into YouTube. And she kind of liked the freedom 
of being able to be creative. Um, so now, and now she has a, a newborn. Just last fall, she had a, a son. And so markets were definitely out. And the uh, YouTube, she's able to do at home with her kids and has turned it into a business. I asked um, what her favorite thing was to either crochet or design. I find that designers do tend to have a favorite thing, but um, she says she doesn't have just one favorite thing to make. Her thing is that she wants her uh, designs to be modern, modern and vibrant, and she wants to make things in her words, to make knitters jealous. She makes garments and shawls with yarns that are typically known to be reserved for knitters. Um, I know we could have a long conversation about knitters and crocheters and um, yeah, that is a debate I don't want to get into, but we all have our story. She says that uh, she loves the indie dyed yarns, and those are the ones that, you know, I think knitters discover indie dyed yarns and lighter weight yarns before crocheters do in most cases. But she says all yarn is for everyone, and crochets, crocheters should feel confident when going into. A yarn store. Crochet is not lesser than knitting. Um, sometimes I think crocheters feel that way and sometimes I think knitters feel that way and I'm not going to get into a debate about it. I'm sure we've had all had stories but it is my observation that when you go to a lot of online yarn shops, be they big box stores or not big box stores, but large um, uh, yarn, yarn uh, shops or small ones, indie dyers or companies, the weight seems to be on knitting. Now, I don't know if that's because there are more knitters than crocheters out there, and so they make more knitting projects, they make more knitting patterns, and they cater to knitters. I just seem to see more of that. And again, I don't want to debate it. It's just been my experience. And I have a feeling it's been Bella's experience, and that's why she has focused on trying to um, come up with new and lovely patterns in crochet that can, crocheters can be proud of. We don't just make afghans anymore or scarves. She says both knitting and crochet have their strengths and both are beautiful. So we, we should all take pride in what we're making. And she says one of her favorite things is when a knitter sees something she's made and says, what? That's crochet? <laughs> that seems to, to please her. Um, that her crocheting looks as good as or even the same as some knitting. I think um, Tunisian crochet has more of a knit look than normal or regular crochet. And then I asked, um, where should she get her inspiration? And she says, her inspirations don't come from any one source. This is what she believes. She believes, and I'm going to read what she said, that she was creatively created to create by a very creative God. And she likes to translate that into her designs. When inspiration strikes, she jumps on it. So I guess that really is the case for most designers. Um, and I think all of us have a little bit of a creative 
bit in us. At least those of us, we may not design, but we are still creative in what we produce because most of us tend to make small alterations to patterns. And we have to be creative in choosing our yarns so that the pattern the designer has come up with is as beautiful as it can possibly be. So I think we all have that little nugget of creativity in us. Um, but when it comes uh, when it comes to designs, I ask then, does the design determine the yarn or do you have, you know, I ask everybody this, and I, I think you can say the same about stitchers. Does the design determine the yarn or does the yarn determine what design you use? And the same for um, designers. Are you pulled by the yarn and the colors or are you pulled by some idea of a pattern and then you find the right colors and yarn? And she said, and most people will say the same thing, that it, it depends. Sometimes she does have a design in mind and, and she builds on it. And then other times um, she's driven by color. She says she really does, um, does have a strong feeling for certain colors. And um, she has, she has um, coined the term rainbow. She loves to work with ra a rainbow of colors and gray is kind of the connecting color or the, the alternating color with the rainbow. So she calls some of her designs rainbow. And you'll see an example of that later. I have done one of her rainbow designs. So she says that more often she is inspired by color and then she builds on that. Um, because she is uses hand dyed yarn um, a fair bit in her, her designs, although she does use regular big box store yarns uh, as well, like four plies, three plies and four plies. I don't think she's ever done anything heavier than four ply, but I could be wrong. Um, I asked about favorite dyers. When I know a designer uses a fair bit of hand dyed yarn, I like to know who their favorite dyer is. And I also like to know if they have a favorite base. Now, she didn't touch on a favorite base as in yarn composition. She did say though that her favorite weight was fingering weight. Um, Favorite dyer, she says, is a little hard. She has collaborated with a few dyers, um, just like some of the other people I have um, talked to. But she said if she had had to pick one, the dyer she likes is Taylor, who is with Yarn for the People. Now, Yarn for the People is a yarn I'm not familiar with, and I definitely will check it out. And um, if I decide to get some, I will let you know. But as you know, I'm backing off of too much uh, purchasing of yarn right now, and I have to guess yarn for the people is, is in the US. She lives in Connecticut, so I'm sure she uses mostly US dyers. Um, she says that what she likes or is hopes to achieve, I guess, with her patterns is to make crocheters feel comfortable with using finer yarns. And I have had to guess that those of you watching me, a number of you, and even maybe some of you that didn't before, because I use a lot of the finer yarns, I think you are tending now to look at them closer and think about getting them. I know that the finer yarns are more expensive, but I think we all deserve one special treat for ourselves. And I think at some point, each and every one of you should get one good quality finer yarn and make yourself something special 
just to have that experience and to know what they feel like and how they work up. And if you, um, if you watch closely, you will find companies that have the finer yarns a little less expensive and they might have sales that <laughs> you can take advantage of so that you aren't paying full price at a higher, higher level. <laughs> so that's um, what she had to tell me. And now I would like to um, show you some of the patterns of hers that I have made. So I would have a feel for what her designs are like. So the first one I have is one you have seen before, and that is this cowl made in what she calls a grain bow. So the base of this was gray. I happen to have a gray just sitting in the, in the closet that had flecks of color in it. See that? And those flecks of color led me to pick those kinds of colors to put in as the rainbow. And these were minis I had in my stash. Um, for some reason, it looks to me like some minis were bigger than others, and that's okay. I, uh, I thought I had done the same number of rows in every color, but it looks like the top one had more rows than the others. So this is, um, it's called, let me look here. It's called Through the Rain. That's her pattern, Through the Rain. Now, um, I will link to her pattern page in Ravelry so you can see all of her patterns rather than putting links to every single pattern. So that was the first one I made, and I made that in December, and I showed it to you then. Then the next one uh, I want to show you, I just finished yesterday, and here it is on faith you can see it is a, a long scarf now i had chosen to do this probably way back in the fall so it wasn't because i'm doing minis that i um i selected this it's just one of her patterns that i had wanted to make for a while now i'll show it to you quickly from one end to the other. I'm not going to go into depth on this because I want to talk about the yarn in it next week and I'll explain that in a minute. So it has gray and black alternating with the other mini colors in between and every mini is a sparkle. Um, I don't know how well that shows up but we, we will talk about this next week in more depth. But what I did want to talk about is the pattern itself. Uh, the pattern is called uh, Hope, and a Hope and a Future Wrap. And this, is, um, this follows in with talking about the designer because she talks about in, uh, in her page how this pattern came to be. And I really want to read what she had to say. She said, this wrap, and I made it wider than hers, but anyhow, this wrap was birthed out of 2020. We all know what happened in 2020. As I was clinging to promises of God in the midst of a lot of darkness, besides being a beautiful bunch of yarn, there was a lot of symbolism in this design. The two main colors of gray and black, and you see that I did put gray and black. I did want to follow her, her reasoning for it. The two main colors of, of gray and black represent that darkness, the hopelessness the world was feeling then. The pops of rainbow remind me of that promise of a hope and future, even when everything looks really dark. I wanted a chevron-like stitch to represent highs and lows, hills and valleys, ups and downs, and choosing to find value and purpose 
in the story that was being created in my life, even in low points. And lastly, the laciness of the stitch was selected because when you are making lace and looking at it up close, it kind of looks like a mess, just a bunch of chaos and holes. But when you step back and get a view of the finished story, there was beauty there all along. I want to wrap myself in hope, and I'm glad you do too. So you can see the chevron idea. <coughs> and this chevron is lacier because it's not made with all double crochet. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not made with all double crochets. It's made with, with a bee stitch. Like I said, I will talk more about this pattern uh, next week because if you recall a while back, I said that I would be talking about about different um, EFA yarns, Expression Fiber Arts. And this gray and this black are an Expression Fiber Art yarn. And I'm going to do my first episode of talking about one specific yarn next week from EFA. So, um, I need another drink. <laughs> and I need to turn the heat off. As you know, I have to turn the heater on in this cold room when I come down here. But after a bit, it gets warm. Now, I have one more um, one more finished item to show you. Kind of excited to show you this because this is my January Cal item. And we'll talk about Cal after I talk about this. So this is... The third item I made that is a fiber and fox design. And I think you can recognize the colors um, on her. It doesn't look too bad. When I was making it, I wasn't particularly happy with it. But I blocked it and it looks much better. Um, it is thick. I did it double stranded and that made it thick like a DK and I did that because she did it as a DK. So here it is finished. Do you recognize the colors? Um, once I show it all to you, I'm going to flash a picture up here of the inspiration picture for January. Now, um, it turned out better than I felt it was going at the time, but I still have to say that I um, either I used too many colors. Well, the pattern asked for four, but I mean, I could have picked a different pattern. I used too many colors or I put the colors maybe in the wrong order because the beginning of it to me with this neutral color and going into the pale pink, you can barely see that it alternates there before going to the pink and brown. And I am thinking, honestly, I did it in the wrong order. I almost wish I'd put this dark brown at the beginning. And the dark brown and pink would have made a nice contrast in the alternating rows. And the cream, <clears throat> the cream next to this would have been just fine. Um, or even if I'd put the pink first, pink and then the brown with the alternating, and then the cream, which would have been a nice contrast, brown and cream, and then this busy color. I'm not sure. I just really think it would have been nicer in a different order. But that's my January cow item. And I'll put it back on her. It's big. It's a very large asymmetrical uh, shawl. And I had uh, yarn left over of all of them, particularly the uh, sort of taupe beige color. I had probably a half of the skein left. So that's my item. And um, 
I'm happy to have it done and to show it to you. And I'm going to be tonight or later today posting that picture in my Ravelry project page so that if you want to see it again or you want to check out the name of the pattern, the pattern is called Dandelion Dance Shawl. Um, if I ever were to do it again, I would use, I think, maybe a sport weight. This is a little bit heavy. By the way, there was new stitches in this. I'd never done what's called a dandelion stitch. Um, and while I'm at it, I went looking at her. I, you know, I wasn't excited about mine. <laughs> I went on her page and I saw there were quite a few projects done. And I'm going to flash a picture right here. This is one of the other, somebody else did that pattern. And those are the colors they used. Now you can tell they would appeal to me. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that makes me think it, it might be a pattern worth doing again if I use the right colors. Um, I did have a few concerns with the pattern. Um, you wouldn't want to be a beginner doing this pattern. Um, but I think if I had a thinner weight, I wouldn't have had the problems I had. And when I was doing this, it was curling terrible. And, and this, the inner curve, which is circular, I thought was too tight. But it blocked out very nicely. And like I said, I like it much more now that it's done and blocked than I did while I was working. While I was working on it, I wasn't really happy with it. But I think that is a little bit about my choices. So as I said, <clears throat> I'm going to put that in my project page. <clears throat> um, so I've shown you, I've told you about uh, Fiber and Fox. I've showed you the things I made for it. I showed you um, my item for the cow. And while we're talking about the cow, um, I think I need to remind you that the cow is almost drawing to a close for January. So you would need to get your pictures to me by Sunday, this Sunday. I need a couple of days to organize um, to get everything ready to show because next Wednesday is the 1st of February. So I have to have my, my video ready to show you everybody's work. And I have, I have to say, eight or nine people so far. And I know of maybe three other people that are doing something that will send me a picture. So I'm going to have at least a dozen people who have sent me pictures of the work they're doing maybe more because not everybody I'm sure is telling me ahead of time. They'll just send me their finished item. So next Wednesday, next week, you'll get two videos. Lucky you. First, you'll get the video that shows you what everybody has made in January. And as part of that video, since it's February the 1st, I will also show you the inspiration for February. And uh, I think you're going to like it. Anyhow, I really appreciate all of you that are participating. And some people told me they weren't able to this month. I There are a lot of cows that came out right now for the this month and next month. And I think as the year goes on, some of those cows will be done and more people will be able to join in into mine, which is great. That's great. So keep in mind then that you have to have your pictures to me by Sunday so that I can work on the video, which will come out on Wednesday. But Thursday, we'll have a normal video for the week because I have some things planned. And part of it is to talk about an EFA yarn. And um, we'll see what else we do next Wednesday, next Thursday. Now, talking about cows, I told you that I'm participating in a few cows. And I'm going to do um, something that 
I don't generally do. I am participating in the cow for um, woods and wool. And I first want to start by telling you, I gave you some wrong information last week. Yes, her cow did start last week, and I thought it went till the end of March, but I was wrong. So I want to correct that. Her cow goes for five weeks. And what she is suggesting is that you split it up and do, because it takes 15 mini skeins, if you're using mini skeins, to break it up and do three skeins a week. And you'll have no problem getting it done. And if you show a picture every week, she has five. I was wrong there. Not three. She has five yarn companies participating. The first week, last week, has already been drawn. You can post in her Facebook page or on Instagram. And she draws a winner from each. And the first week got something, I think a gift certificate from Lion Brand. It was only open to us this week. <clears throat> might be you and me. I forget the other four yarn companies, but each week they'll be drawing from both. <clears throat> and um, you get a gift certificate to get yarn at their, their store. So I'm, I have decided, I don't usually do this, but I'm trying to do so many things at once. I've decided that I'm going to follow um, her suggestion and I'm going to do three minis a week now I didn't do any last week because I was busy trying to finish this one so this week and I didn't post of course so this week I'm going to do six mini skeins of hers and get it posted I have to do that by the uh, end of the week I think by Sunday I think I can get six done by Friday and then uh I'm only going to do three mini skeins a week on that one. That way I can post every week my progress. And I might even put uh, pic those pictures in my Ravelry page as well. <clears throat> so I'm not, typ I'm not typically working on two or three things at once. I do one thing and finish, do another thing and finish. If I don't finish it, it goes in timeout and it stays there as a UFO for who knows how long. But this one I am going to do a little bit at once. So I just started like, I don't know, four or five rows. The Venture, I'll put a picture here right now. This is the Venture shawl. And I showed you the picture before, but this is the picture of the mini yarns that I'm using. And I just started the very first mini last night and did, like I said, maybe five or six rows down at the point, nothing to see. But next week I'll show you what I have accomplished with the first uh, six. Maybe I'll even have by next Thursday, I'll have nine done. So in the meantime, I'm going to go over and pick uh, another pattern to do. I haven't decided 100% whether I'm going to do this shawl all along right now or put it off for a bit and do something else. Um, maybe uh, a shawl for my uh, donation box, just something easy for a break. And then I'll be getting into my February cow. So those are the things I wanted to tell you about that. Now, um, I received my yarn from Ravenswood. You know, they had the uh, subscription and I bought three months, and I did receive the first month, January. Um, did I get it on Monday or did I get it last Friday? I can't even remember now, but I, I just received it since last week. And so I wanted to show that to you. Um, this is the only yarn I have to show you this week. Uh, I'll show you a bit more next week. So this is from Ravenswood. And it is called Wally Ravenswood. Uh, the yarn every month is going to be Superwash Merino and Nylon and uh, 8515 blend. It always feels nice, and there's 400 meters in it. And it's called Wally because Wally is the rooster at, at their farm. They have a farm with quite a few different animals, and so she showed us a picture of 
roost, uh, Wally the rooster as the inspiration. And I think you can see rooster colors. He is a black rooster and he shimmered. It looked to me like there was blue and purple in it, but I guess maybe she could see it different and it was more this color. And then of course the, the head of the rooster has these colors in it. Um, feels very nice. It is a nice yarn always. Um, color wise, I'm okay with it. I will find something to make with it because I know that there are people that love these colors. If I were online to buy yarn, probably this would not be something that would draw me to it. But I'm not disappointed either. I want to wait, though, until the end of three months and see um, what else we get. And I am believing she did make the comment that um, it'll be the animals on the farm that will be inspiring the various hanks of yarn. So that's what I got in January. And that's all I have for you today. Um, I have lots of yarn to show, so we're going to be busy looking at yarn most weeks for the future. Oh, I know, I forgot to show you. This is the yarn that was left over from my January cow. As I said, I had almost half of a skein, maybe a little less, of this color. But the brown, which is a wide part, and the variegated, very little amounts left of them. You can see that one has the sparkle and this one is a tweed and there's a little more of it left than the other the other two. Again, it was at the narrower part. So I didn't realize they were sitting right in front of my nose. <laughs> so, um, oh, one last thing I want to mention before I say goodbye. I think this has gotten too long. I did it in parts, so I don't know what the total is. I asked last week on my video, uh, were you interested in having a tutorial, a Ravelry tutorial to learn more about it? And I was very, very surprised that everybody that responded, now that's not everybody that views my videos, but everybody that responded said they would like one. Uh, they would like to know more about Ravelry, and so I am going to do a tutorial. And in fact, I've decided that you don't want to listen to a whole half hour, 40 minutes of tutorial. So I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm going to break it up into about maybe 15 minutes twice. We'll see how much there is to say and to show. And I'm going to do that um, later in February. I don't know if I'll do it the second and third week or the third and fourth week, but I am going to do a two-part at least in, in February. So <clears throat> for all of you watching, and I'll mention this again next week, please be sure to get yourself a Ravelry account. All right? And I will tell you next week um, how we're going to handle that tutorial. So make sure that you have a Ravelry account. You just have to go to Ravelry.com and it'll ask you to sign in or to create a profile or um, I don't know what they call it, an account, Pro create an account. <clears throat> very, very simple thing to do <clears throat> like anywhere else depends on your email address, of course. So um, until we meet again, happy hooking.